Hello my beautiful babes. I am vlogging about something very, very personal today. I am digging my makeup by the way today. I'm digging it. Did a very like cool sort of eye. Actually, I think on Snapchat I said I did a warm eye, but it's not, it's cool. I'm making mistakes, you guys. The perfectionist in me is like, why'd you say that? I'm also like really digging my hair because it's just really nice and like a soft wave. I also have a tutorial on my channel. Make sure you guys check it out on how to get this actual look. I love it so much. So I am on my way to an appointment. So this topic is very, very dear to me, very, very personal. And to be honest with you guys, I wasn't sure if I was even going to bring this up or ever even talk about it. I think being your true self and being confident with you know, your imperfections, the good and bad in yourself basically is I think something that I'm really learning now at this age. And again, this has just been something that I just, I really wasn't sure if I was going to even talk about it because it's just so personal, you guys. And it was, it has been a little bit of a struggle. I won't say it's been a huge struggle because, you know, I've made it this far, but it's definitely been something that I've always questioned you know, why, like, why did this have to happen? Or, you know, why me kind of thing? But I do believe that you were served the life that you were served and you were served certain things, certain imperfections about yourself. And especially with self-esteem these days, it's like really hard for people to accept imperfections about yourself. And that's just what this vlog is gonna kind of be about. The reason why I decided to actually talk about it was to be very honest with you, to me, I figured, you know what, people need to hear this. And there's people out there that have imperfections and they're so insecure about them. And I really just want to... Sorry. Where is my toilet paper roll at? Anyways. I just want you guys to know that, you know, everybody is imperfect. Nobody is perfect. And we all have our imperfections. I have my imperfections. The whole point of me wanting to even open up about this is basically about bullying, self-esteem, confidence, imperfections. And I just really want to speak for the people that find it so hard to talk about their imperfections and for the people that have been bullied for their imperfections. You know, I really feel for you. I have been strong about this situation. And to be honest with you, like I said, I've made it this far, so this isn't really for me. I want to really, really, really help other people. Just understand that don't let your imperfections get in the way of living your best life. Like, honey, I am living my best life. With imperfections or not, that's exactly what I'm doing right now. So you're probably wondering what it is. Some of you have probably noticed, and I just want to say one thing before I get started about what I'm gonna be talking about. Might have noticed this imperfection in me, but probably said to themselves, yeah, hmm, that's an imperfection, but you know what? She's still beautiful and she still does her thing and I still love her. You know, I really want to take this moment to commend you guys because you guys are real people. You guys are loving people, caring people, because if not, you would have made a comment about it. And to those of you who have made a comment about it, to be very honest with you, I have just never been raised like that. Um, if there's somebody that has this massive scar in their face, it's just my mom did not raise me like that. You just don't go up to that person and go, you have a big scar in your face. I just don't believe personally in my opinion that you should point it out. You know, that person knows they have that imperfection. I'm pretty sure they know. Like I said, my mom taught me, you, you just don't do that. You know, and you know, some of you have pointed it out and said, you just want me to talk about it because maybe you have this imperfection too. You know, those people I can understand. I just don't agree with, you know, comments like pointing it out. I'm just like, really? I will see an imperfection in someone, but I see right past it and I go back to how they are as a person and their personality. I've gotten a few comments about it, not a whole lot of them to be very honest with you guys. At the end of the day, my stand with it is my stand with it. So whatever you have to say about it, to be honest with you, it doesn't affect me. So for the longest time ever since I was born, I was born with a lazy eye. 
It's definitely been something that, you know, it's always been an imperfection of mine. I, I do have a lazy eye. I want to open up about it. I, I know that those comments are coming from a jealous place. You know, people probably wonder, like, damn, she has a lazy eye, but she still, you know, like, she still takes care of herself. She's still beautiful. Hell yeah, I'm still beautiful. You think I'm going to use this lazy eye as a crutch? To stop me from living my life? Absolutely not. I refuse to. So the appointment that I'm going to is for, you know, the doctor to kind of go over what are the steps that I can take. Um, I'm thinking of getting, it is called, the technical term is called strabismus. And a lot of people actually have this problem, some more than others. I don't have it that bad. And I'm very thankful for that. I have been operated twice I had it ever since birth. It's something that my parents noticed right away. And they operated me, I believe, as soon as 19 months, almost when I was two years old. And that was a very difficult decision for my parents to make, you know. Um, I always, every time, you know, I'm, I feel so grateful for you know, the vision I still do have and the talents that I have been given and gifted with, I think about like, wow, you have this imperfection, but you have so much more to offer that this thing doesn't even matter. I just really think about all the stress that my parents must have had to go under. You know, imagine you have this little baby and this baby has this imperfection and someone tells you, yeah, we can fix this, but we have to operate her. I just think that that was very courageous of them and my mom told me that she, as soon as she got inside of the room at the hospital, she literally broke down. She's like, I didn't want to give you to them because I didn't know, you know, what are they going to do to my baby? They must have had to been extremely strong. And I just really, truly, truly, truly appreciate it. I know someone personally that their, you know, their child has it and they don't really want to do anything about it. Um, that's their choice. But for me, I'm very thankful that my parents did something about it because when I was born with it, it was bad, you know, and they really were like, no, like, I really think that when she grows up, she would want this, you know, taken care of. But again, like every time I think about it, I just get super, super emotional because I just, I cannot imagine, you know, having to do that to my child and making that decision for them, you know? Yeah, so I was operated twice. They fixed everything. Everything was good. I wore glasses at a very, very young age, but I would go to school and like fight with my mom and say like, I don't want to wear the glasses because they're not cool. Like nobody else wears them. I'm not pretty with them. Now I don't mind wearing glasses. It's just being like on YouTube and an influencer. Of course, like when I take my pictures and stuff like that, I would rather not wear them. I'll wear contacts like when I go out and stuff like that to somewhere like fancy, but on a normal day basis, I wear my glasses. And funny enough, a lot of people tell me that glasses do suit me and I feel like they suit me. So I'm very grateful that they actually suit me and they look good on me. And I actually like picking out glasses. I've always loved it. It's something that I've done ever since I was like a little girl. So I don't mind it. Like filming right now, I'm not having, I don't have any contacts on. And when I do like other videos and I don't have my glasses on, I'm not even wearing any contacts. So I'm not even like seeing 100% when I'm filming for you guys. But that's a fun fact. I feel like now it's, I don't know if like the surgery is wearing off, but the reason why it's called a lazy eye or a business is because it's lazy. So if you are not, you know, exercising it or using it, over time it just gets weak. And, but it's taken a long time. It's only started to kind of like show around, I would say maybe like two years ago-ish, where I really started to notice it back again. So that's what this appointment is about. I want to talk to her about my options. I've been to a specialist years ago and that's why it kind of scared me away from it because he said he had to like touch both of my eyes, which I'm not comfortable with. I just really hope that, you know, some of you guys can relate to this, whether you have a lazy eye, whether you get bullied, you know, at school or outside or at work or wherever it is, or if you have an imperfection that you're uncomfortable with, I really hope that you know, what I really get through this video and the message that I send is that just accept you were born with these imperfections. Some of our imperfections can be fixed. Some of our imperfections can't be fixed. But at the end of the day, like I always say, we always have two options. We can sit here and we can be negative about it. Like I can sit here and be like, I have a lazy eye. I don't want to do YouTube because people are going to see it. And I don't want to do Instagram because people are going to notice it there. But what I did instead was said to myself, no, Steph, this is what you enjoy doing. You know, you're a beautiful girl inside and out. You have this imperfection, yeah, but who doesn't have an imperfection? Just because you can see yours doesn't mean it's that much more important. 
you know, what about people who are who are ill inside and you don't know that that's what they're suffering with, you know? I feel for those people too. It wasn't really a struggle growing up. It was only, it only started to kind of bother me when I started to do YouTube and Instagram because I was like physically out there and showing my face all the time. But I just really realized that, you know, I love what I do more than this imperfection, basically, is what I'm trying to say. And you have to just keep moving forward. You're really happy that I'm opening up about it. Do you guys hear Bentley's toy? You can use your imperfection as a crutch and as an excuse and as a band-aid to cover up all your other talents that you have or what you have to bring to the world or you can use your imperfection to help other people and that's what i'm trying to do right now i want to come out and say it yes mama no no if the options are kind of too risky to be honest with you guys i don't think i will go for it but i'm just hoping that um she says that you know, she can help me out and that we can do the surgery again since I've got it before. I am like, when it comes to this, I'm always like 50-50. I'm like super positive about it and then I'm just like, yeah, but what if? That's just kind of my way of dealing with it and being prepared for the good or for bad news, you know what I mean, at the same time. And I think that's important and I think that that's mature because this is a very serious topic, you know, it's not a joke. So I don't want to risk anything. Kind of just, whew, I feel so good, just kind of like telling you guys, you know, the truth. And I want you guys to know, you know, that I'm not perfect because everybody has something, everybody has something that they're going through. And you know what, regardless of good or bad news, you know, I know that I will leave there and with more information, more knowledge, and I've always felt guilty if I wanted to do something to my eyes. I feel like I'm being like greedy. Like just, you know, keep your imperfection and don't ask for too much stuff and don't be greedy, you know, and try to make it perfect. But I don't think I'm asking for much. So I just feel so good that I'm going to somebody that really knows this sort of issue and has dealt with it so many different times and has, you know, fixed it for many people different times. I'm going to go and I'm going to recap you guys after about um, what she said and kind of what I decide. And then I'm just kind of curious to see if it's something that I'm actually gonna go through with. And if not, you know what? I'm just going to continue to live my life the way I've been living it. You know, I know I've said imperfection so many times in this video, but it is, it's an imperfection. And I think it's important to accept imperfections, you know, whether it can be fixed or not, like I mentioned. Um, and if it's something that is too risky to fix, I'm not gonna do that. I'm not going to, to risk the beautiful life that I have for something like that, you know? And I think that when you are forced to do with something that's not 100% perfect, I think it only makes you stronger. You know, I think that sometimes fixing every single thing sometimes can teach you that, okay, everything has to be perfect, you know? And I'm like that, but I want to accept that not everything has to be perfect and you're going to be okay if not everything is perfect. That's what I want to know. You guys, I have to just show you this bomb outfit. So look at this. Like, hello. Put on my boohoo fur coat. I mean, this is a little bit off topic, but it's okay. I wanted to take a photo with this outfit because I didn't take a photo yet with this top that I got from Forever 21. Absolutely love it, this blouse. I tie it up on the front here. We can do the one one shoulder thing. Let's do, the, whoa, okay, one, one second, guys. Yep, nope. Yep, just, just be cool, just. Be cool. Put it over the one shoulder. Yep. That's it. Okay. This is when things go wrong. So I'm actually like filming two vlogs right now. Um, right now I'm doing a grocery vlog for you guys. But I also wanted to catch up on how my appointment went um, yesterday. First I had to do a couple of tests with the assistant and then the actual doctor sees you afterwards. When the doctor first came in and started like talking to me, I felt to be very honest with you guys, I felt a little bit rushed. Um, I didn't like that. This is a very serious issue to me and it's probably, I mean, the most serious issue to me in my life personally. So I just felt like I wasn't, my issue wasn't important. I honestly felt like that. There just wasn't a time where she was like, do you have any questions or concerns? It was kind of just like, okay, well, this is what I see. Here are the options and um, you can come back and let me know like what you kind of want to do. I just, like I said to her, I'm like, I came to you to get your opinion, like based off of what you see. And if this was you, like, what would you do? Would you even do this? You know, do you think that it's something I should do? Do you think there's going to be a massive improvement? Here's what she told me. She told me that depending where I look and depending how far an object is, 
um, that it, it'll do different things, you know? And, and I already had that idea in my mind, but, and I'm not gonna give up because I just don't, something is just, I don't know, I'm just not like fully content with what I heard. Um, she basically was saying that she can't fix one way without sacrificing another thing. So basically, if I'm looking to the side, um, and she fixes that problem, then when there's a camera far in front of me, that there might be a slight change that way. So she can't just fix it as a whole. I'm no doctor. I don't know if it's just because of how, you know, after all these years of maybe what it's just resulted to now. So conclusion is my decision right now is still very indecisive. I'm not, I'm not ready to just be like, yeah, okay, let's do this. So she told me to book an appointment, so I did. I went ahead and booked another appointment to see her. And this appointment would be for me, she's saying, look at your pictures, look at your videos and stuff like that, and kind of see what's important to you. And if it's important to you when you're looking over here or looking over there, and that's more important to you, then I can fix that. And for me, I'm just like, mm. what I got from it is you, I have to choose. I have to choose um, if it's more important for me in far pictures to fix something or when I'm filming and I'm like for me if that's gonna be the case I'm just gonna stay the way I am. I'm going to look into another doctor um, I found another one in Toronto. I think I'm going to contact him But again, it's gonna take months for me to get that appointment. It took me months to get this one So I should have like done this before so there's this thing inside of me saying like do you even really want to do this? Because I've been living with this for such a long time you guys and it's it's been you know, a little bit of a challenge for me, but at the end of the day, I've overcome it in so many ways. You know, the fact that I'm even putting, you know, this imperfection out in the public world where everybody can hear that I have this problem is, is huge. And it tells me how confident I am with it. Leaving that appointment, these were the thoughts that ran through my mind. So the first thing I thought to myself was, okay, well, you heard what she said, Steph, you know, it's uh, it's not what you really wanted to hear. You wanted to hear that she could fix it, not a problem, and this wouldn't be that big of a deal. That's what she wanted to hear, but you didn't hear that. Um, the other thing is, I thought automatically is, okay, well, again, the reality is that you've been dealt this card. Since birth, this is the cards, you know, these are the cards that have been dealt. And I, I said to myself, you know, you've accepted these cards that you've been dealt for years. Regardless if you guys have an imperfection or whatever it is that you are unhappy about yourself that you were dealt whether it can be fixed or not um for me what helps me is i'm just like you know what you can make the best out of it which is what i am currently doing or you can sit there and dwell on it um you know i i'm not gonna lie there there's been some days where i can dwell on it you know every every human can't help to be like but why why did it have to be like this you know it's just human nature this is what it is by dwelling it's just like stressing it's just like worrying about something worrying about something never helps you in any way at all at the end of the day there's a physical problem right so there's a problem worrying is literally like a something orbiting around the problem and around and around and the worry is never going to fix this issue right here it's never going to fix it and I think that naturally we worry and naturally we stress, of course. You know, when I heard that answer, I was like, oh, okay, great, like, here we go again. At the end of the day, I'm comfortable with the fact that if I go ahead with this and this new doctor says, yep, I can make it a lot better, cool, I'm comfortable with that. This one said that it will improve, but I just didn't like that she's like, you have to be very particular about what you wanna fix because something else might get a little bit worse. That I don't like, I would rather just stay the way. If by any chance he says, you know, you know, there's this risk, there's that risk, whatever, I probably wouldn't do it. I'm comfortable with that. And if I choose, even if he says that he can make this so much better, but I choose not to because I just, my heart just doesn't feel right or my intuition's telling me, no, 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 Steph, just stay the way you are. I'm okay with that decision too. I'm okay with the fact that I'm not perfect. It's always been a struggle to make everything perfect in my life, but I've learned that it's that challenge to understand that not everything is perfect is so powerful, you guys, and it's helped me grow so much. Not everything is perfect. Nothing, nothing. And there's actually beauty in, in recognizing 
the imperfections because it's only made me stronger. When I talk to people, sometimes it's uncomfortable because, you know, I can feel personally when my lazy eye comes out, I can feel it. And, or if I'm nervous or uncomfortable or, or tired, that's, I know it's gonna come a little bit more. You now, if some of you do have it, I know that you sometimes experience social anxiety. And the people who do have it, we know that there's techniques and things that we do that we know helps. You learn tricks on how to do certain things. It's just, it comes with every every imperfection, everything that you have to deal with. Or if someone has a scar on their face and they, they've, they've learned a way how to cover it so good with makeup. That's just, that's just something you learn based off of your imperfection. It's just like that. I think I'm gonna cancel this appointment and I think I'm going to get in touch with a new one. And my sister doesn't even notice it when I'm talking to her, but again, it's because I'm comfortable with her, so I know that it doesn't even, like, it doesn't even happen. I don't know how to, how to explain it. For those of you who have it, I know you guys, I know you guys are feeling me through the camera right now. I know you guys are feeling me. I'm gonna try someone new and see how that works out for me. And overall, I'm still a happy person. I'm still, you know, gonna go on with my life and do what I love. And the last thing I wanna do is, is risk anything and just because of this imperfection if you guys enjoyed this video make sure you guys give it a thumbs up and also don't forget to subscribe i am going to be doing more advice videos because you guys love my last one thank you guys so much for all the love that you guys gave to me um so thank you guys so much for watching i really hope that my story was somehow relatable to you guys and if you guys want to share your experience down below, make sure you guys leave a comment. I would love to hear your story. And thank you guys so much for watching. I will see all of my babes next time.